In some previous sections, I demonstrated how to create the simplest thing, a linear gradient. Then, I also showed how to create a circular gradient. But I wasn't yet satisfied, not fully, because I know that the most generalized form of that tool is to create an elliptical gradient. And ellipses, that's a geometry that captures, that characterizes most astronomical objects galaxies, nebula, they, they can all be and characterized in terms of a geometry, generally in some ellipse or combination therein. That makes for a very powerful tool for masks, and it's one that I just really wanted to create using pixel math. Here is what I came up with. I worked very hard to find what is basically a generalized formula of an ellipse, and what we need to do is, of course, like the circular um, version of this, we need to specify a position within this picture that we want to generate our little um, geometry, or in this case it'll be an ellipse, that will have a gradient effect for purposes of our mask. So let me show you the expression and the parameters here. This is the expression, the equation basically that I settled on for an ellipse in this form. And this form, just so you know, is normalized to one. That's important in a moment when I show you the parameters. That means the ellipse is actually only in the uh, one unit space, if you will. But then here are the parameters where I specify the position, just like we uh, always do. This is the XY position in the image, the center of where we want our geometry to be. Um, and uh, for an ellipse, you have to specify, in this case, these are the semi-major and minor axes of the ellipse. So these just become basically a multiplier. If you look at the, uh, the equation, they blow up the ellipse in these two directions, orthogonal directions. Now that's fine, but then of course, in order to accommodate some arbitrary um, object in the picture, you also need to rotate the ellipse. So you need to specify the center, how big it's going to be, and then of course, uh, rotate it so that it matches your object. Let me show you how this works in practice and also philosophically why you would want to do it. Maybe I'll start there. Let's look at this picture, which I think is a, a fantastic example. This is a picture in which the subjects, there are really only two, are these galaxies. The rest of the field is basically comprised of you know, the sky, there are some background galaxies, and stars, that's it. But the objects in here that really need the processing, perhaps independent processing of the stars and the sky, are the galaxies. And those galaxies can be excellently characterized by ellipses. So I need to create the mask that's going to do the job for us, and I'm going to use, of course, this tool that I made. I'm not aware of another tool that someone has uh, generated yet that, that does this. Maybe it exists. I haven't seen it. So I, I think that this would make, by the way, an excellent script. How it would work, see this is, this is my imagination, right? This, how it would work is you would click on the screen and that would specify the centering position. And then of course you would also with a slider or sliders, you would specify the size of the ellipse with the, uh, the A and the B values and then the angle with another slider. And then, uh, so it would draw on the screen kind of a provisional um, outline of your ellipse. And then when you say go, it'll create what uh, I'll demonstrate here in just a moment is this kind of gradient-like ellipse. So let's, uh, let's do it in practice here. What we need to do is know the center of, uh, of the galaxy, the, where it is uh, in the picture. So I get the coordinates of the galaxy, let's see. Coordinates of the galaxy are roughly 2175 and 1868. So we write, or we type, 2175 and 1868. Now, as far as the size is concerned, remember I said that these A and B values, 
those are the semi-major axes. That's, that's the radius, if you will. Um, so if I measured the, uh, let's say I'm working with the width of the galaxy, if I measure the width of the galaxy, the whole thing, I need to divide that by 2 and then put the number, or I can just do the, you know, half the galaxy, and that's the number I input here. About the A and the B, for the moment, there, there are other ways of thinking of it. It's not actually defined, but for purposes of practical use right now, so hopefully it'll make sense, just pretend that the A parameter is kind of the the ellipse in the x direction, and the b parameter is the ellipse in the y direction. That might make it easier to understand um, how we're doing this. So the width of this galaxy, if I start at 2175 and I move over maybe to about here, well now I'm at 2298. So that's a little more than 100. So perhaps we'll put 120. As far as the uh, other dimension of the galaxy, start here, we go, it's almost vertical, so I should just be able to go vertically. Look at the Y, we have 1870, and I come up to here, and now we have 20, let's call it 2200, because it's at an angle anyway. So that's 300, plus. I think we should probably put in to be as um, accommodating as possible here, about 400. It's going to be basically a 4 to 1, I think you would agree, right? 4 to 1 ratio of A and B here. Now the angle. Now what I've just generated at the moment is a vertical elongated ellipse. Because um, if you just think about it with the angle equals 0, that's what it would draw here on the screen. So the way the, uh, the, way the angle number works, if I put 0 here, it would make a vertical, a vertical creature. But um, I need to rotate it because this is at an angle. So a positive number here for angle is going to rotate by that number degrees in the clockwise direction. And a negative number would rotate in the uh, counterclockwise direction. Now I could, of course, I can go some big number um, all the way around clockwise, or I can do some small number counterclockwise. It, it's synonymous. It works the same way. That's the nice thing about sines and cosines. So... Um, what is that angle from straight up? I'm going to say it's about 20 degrees counterclockwise. So I'm going to put here minus 20. And I'm hoping that's pretty close. Now the way I like to work with this is I like to replace the target image because I like to just replace things if I mess up or whatever. Um, that means I don't want to do it to this image. I'm going to do it to a clone of this, well, it could be any image. It just needs to be the same size. So here, I'm going to make a copy, and this will become my mask. So I just uh, apply it to the image, and it is my hope that we generate a small elliptical geometry there. And there it is. Now, if we want to see if it actually matches, first we make these two windows the same. Now, I demonstrated this earlier in earlier uh, tutorials. Of course, we need a Make the uh, zoom and the centering be the same as well. Oh, I just matched the wrong thing. Let's, uh... oh, I did that right. And let's blink and see what happens. So to blink, I'm going to do uh, control page down. That looks pretty close. I hope you can see that the galaxy and the oval reasonably overlap. All right, so now we need to do the same kind of work on the other galaxy. The reason that I think that this is special, what I'm demonstrating right now, this is the philosophy I didn't actually say, is that it is possible, say, to use wavelets to do what we're doing. Because wavelets, uh, some of the different processes that are available in PixInsight, they work on spatial scales. It might be possible by using wavelets alone to capture these two galaxies and probably some other bright stars. But it's still ultimately determined by the data itself, by the image structure itself. And that can be hard to manage. Whereas in this particular case, I just know that, uh, you know, if I can partially get there with the, the wavelets version of it, 
why not do it exactly the way I want, ignoring all the other bright stars that might show up when I use this other method, and just selectively and very specifically, surgically if you will, characterize my mask for exactly the regions that I want. So I, I just think that this is a very directive way of doing it, and there are many reasons why you'd want to do it. I'm demonstrating one, and I'll, I'll show you another one in, as well. But the philosophy is, why should I apply any kind of processing steps to these galaxies that might affect anything else in the image, the stars or the background sky? I don't want to do that, and so I need to find a way to make a mask that accommodates that desire. And this wet method, I think, is a very powerful way to do it. So let's go in and look at this galaxy then. We have a center position of uh, 3075 in 1976. So we have 3075 and 1976. We also need to know the width. Well, this has got to be thinner than the other galaxy, right? I mean, we can sit here and try to measure but it's less than 100. Let's just say it's something on the order of 80. Now, the height. Imagine, again, this is vertical, and then we'll worry about the rotation. If this were vertical, I'd look at the y value here. I go from uh, 1965, 19 whatever, 1950, we'll call it, to if we come all the way up here, we're now at 17, let's call it 1750. So that's you know, that's almost uh, 200 or so. So why don't we say, but this is at an angle, that's the thing. So let's call it three, I'm gonna call it 350, because I want to include the further length of the galaxy. I want to make it really, th really thin. Now the angle. Hmm. This one was minus 20. I can imagine this one being maybe twice that one, you know, just another 20 degrees more. Let's, let's give that a shot. I mean, you know, you, it's very likely you'll need to make an adjustment because the angles and things are not on here. If I had my cool little script that I want, well, I'd work, it'd all be done. But let's make a guess here and do that. Now, what we want to do is adjust this mass because now we're going to add another one for this other galaxy. So we don't want to write zeros wherever there isn't our ellipse. We want to now keep the black except, we'll keep everything, uh, actually, the black and the current ellipse. So we need to keep the target values unless it's in the ellipse that we're now specifying. And by the way, if I, I don't think I mentioned it earlier, in the expression that I have, you'll notice that when we are in the ellipse, we do this thing, and this thing is what generates the gradient, like I demonstrated in the earlier sections. You'll notice that it is the radius divided by the maximum value. So as you go along within the ellipse at a given radius, you're going to adjust, in this case, going from 1 to 0 from the center of the ellipse outward. Otherwise, if you're not in the ellipse, you just write out uh, the original value. That's what this expression is now going to do for us. So let's, let's make it work. That looks pretty close. Uh, we'll blink. Do we still have it lying? Yeah, it's, it's here. Can't remember if I changed the zoom or not. Let's give it a go. Yeah, I did. So let's match these things here. There we go. And let's make sure that our windows are exactly the same. I think they are. Yes, they are. Okay, blink. That's pretty close. I might argue that that ga the, uh, I think the mask for the uh, small galaxy might be a little too thick. The angle looks good. The length looks good. Maybe it's a little too thick. So if I didn't like it, I can always just undo 
just change the thickness. Maybe we make it 60 here instead of 80. Just do it again. And then we have our perfect two galaxy mask that we can then operate on the image once we apply it as a mask in any way that we might desire to do. So we would put this as a mask here. Now it's in place. And then uh, let's say, for example, uh, we wanted to um, adjust the galaxy's color or perhaps change the contrast of these galaxies. All we would be operating on are the two galaxies. And if we wanted to soften the effect or not have it uh, to uh, be to blend in better, of course, we can use the uh, convolution process and blur the mask and then apply whatever processing we want here. Yeah, see, blurred. So you maybe iteratively blur and then apply whatever processing here we wanted to on the galaxies. So I, I think you can see, I'm not going to demonstrate doing something. You can imagine anything, doing whatever you would like. But hopefully you can see the, the, the power of being able to do this. And by the way, this, this whole idea relies on the fact that most objects are brighter in the center. Um, and then moving out, of course, uh, they get fainter. So having this as a gradient, you don't have to have a gradient, by the way. Um, you can change the formula here so you're not actually operating um, in a gradient form. You can just make it output 1 instead of make it a gradient. But I, I find that the gradient form of this elliptical mask is a, the, really the most powerful version. Okay, so now let me show you a, a real-world example that I just recently did. Uh, and you will recall from some of the other sections seeing this particular image here. I have an image of this fly, flaming skull nebula. And what I'd like to do is go back in time. So I'm going to load the History Explorer. And you'll see that I did all these SCNR things. What was that about? Well, let's go back to the beginning here. And you'll notice in the image there is this uh, sword of blue diving down in the image. It's probably some glint or glow from some, some star just outside the field. So what I did is I created a mask using this exact technique. I, I specified the position. Now you'll note that it, it's really only half of an ellipse here because it really starts at its thickest basically where it enters and then it gets uh, elliptical beyond that half of an ellipse. So this would be the center and then for the radius I only specify um, well, it's the same radius, but only part of it is going to show when I put the centering here. So let me show you what that looks like. I think it's this one. Yep. This is the mask that I used uh, for that particular image. And then what I did after applying this mask, you can see it's actually applied, is I iteratively applied um, SCNR, SCN, uh, SCNR, yes, uh, but I only did it to the blue channel. So if you now go forward in time, after all of my iterations, I did it, you know, by um, integer and very small incremental amounts so that it's not perfect, but it does reduce the amount of blue that you see. So that, that was the idea by generating a selective. These are selective elliptical masks that I'm making. And I can use that to be very um, surgical about how I process these images. I mean, here's an object that could also, I didn't use it this way, uh, but it could basically have an elliptical type of mask if need be um, occur on it. Or if there's some small area like this glow up here in the corner. Again, I could generate it, it so happens it'd probably be a spherical one, but it would be another mask um, from this very generalized tool. So I, I hope that in this demonstration uh, you get a couple of things out of this. One is you saw how the tool was used. You're going to get this icon. Um, it'll be as you know one of the one of the uh, documents, one of the uh, icon processes that's available that you can just load um, in for your own use, and also. Uh, kind of, again, the philosophy of the, the way in which you could use this tool to really improve your images.